we are moving on to the next presentation on young carers in Switzerland who are more than expected. Um, our presenters, unfortunately, couldn't make it because of the time difference to Switzerland, but they were uh, lovely and sent us a pre-recorded presentation. Our, presenta our presenters are Marian Frech, who is the head of the master's program uh, in nursing science at the Karium Hochschule Gesundheit in Zürich, uh, Switzerland. She's also pursuing her doctorate at the Institute of Nursing Sciences at the Faculty of Sociology at the University of Vienna on young carers and adult carers in Switzerland on the impact of their caring role and their needs for support. And she's presenting together with Hannah Wepf, who is a doctoral candidate in psychology at the University of Zürich and works as a research assistant at the Korean School of Health in Zürich in Switzerland. Uh, her research focuses on young carers, particularly on the ways uh, in which a caring role is related to youth, to youth's mental uh, well-being during adolescence. Uh, please enjoy um, the following presentation. Welcome to this afternoon's session on the secret lives of carers. We send our warmest greetings from the Zürich Karium campus in Switzerland today. My name is Marianne Freck. I'm a registered nurse and I'm the study program director of the Master in Nursing Science here at the School of Health in Zurich. Um, I have been working in the young carer team ever since we started. My name is Hannah Webb. I'm a psychologist and I work in the Karium School of Health research team for young carers research together with Marianne since 2015. We will show you within the next 15 minutes an introduction about the International Young Carers Research, but specifically uh, an input um, about the Swiss Young Carers Research we conduct in Switzerland. This will be followed by two short inputs from Hannah and me about our PhDs we're doing about the young carer community. One is about young carers model of support and um, Hannah's PhD is focusing on young adolescents carers growing up in the context of caring. This will be followed by a discussion um, to at the end. What you see here is the international classification of in-country awareness um, that um, Saul Becker, who we heard earlier in his research, um, and colleague Agnes Loy, who is our program director at the Young Carers Research Team in Switzerland. Um, created. So what you see is that there actually is only one country on an advanced level when it comes to the awareness towards young carers and that's um, the UK where Saul Becker has done terrific research within the last 30 years. Australia will be um, can be found on an intermediate level with advanced um, social policies um, towards young carers. And if you're looking for Switzerland, you find our country on level five, still on an emerging um, level of awareness towards young carers with having no specific legal requirements or specific support services for young carers. This is an overview of our research project we have been conducted until um, the start of our research team in 2014. So we started with two, we see these on the left hand side, with two projects focusing on young carers. And these two studies have been qualitative studies with interviews with young carers. And the second one were um, focus group interviews with professionals. So the aim was to really find out more about the situation of these young people in the Swiss context and what that means for them. The following projects have been have included professional perspective, but on a large scale, quantitative level, we conducted a survey among um, occupational sectors from healthcare, education, and social services. Um, 
in the pupil survey that was a prevalence study conducted with young carers 10 to 15 years old, we found out that 8% of young carers in Switzerland can be found. And if we talk about a normal class range, about 20 people in one class, you will find um, you're more likely to find about two, one to two person in each class. Um, further um, studies that's been um, conducted later, especially on a national um, scale with um, the Ministry of Public Health, we found out more about the needs of young carers and their families. And that was actually a carer survey. And for the first time, we were able to include young people from 16 as well. Um, in another project, um, we are in the same project, but with another focus. We um, looked in deeply about what are the top five support needs of young carers, also the five support needs of carers um, overall, and um, especially what we wanted to find out what challenges with their education they're facing. So the latest projects we actually um, are conducting, they're right on their ways about information needs in response to COVID-19, to the pandemic situation they've been facing. And if you would like to have a look at this slide, this is focusing on this um, um, survey, that national survey about young carers. So if we do want to have a look at those five support needs, you will find that these five, and this is actually like a ranking, um, is what the young people told us. So they do need sort of like an emergency plan in order to be able to go on and be able to, to, to um, be powerful and manage difficult situations at home. They also need like information and tips for emergencies, like it's sort of like an upskilling they need and in information about other support services that's not specifically on emergency um, situation but still everyday life school working with other professionals or uh, occupational sectors professionals and um, that's um, a very important need for them as well they do need some leisure time so what they would love to have is to be able to have time to spend outside, to go and follow their friends and hobbies, and they go and visit um, like um, youth services or go and play soccer without having to think about the situation at home all the time. And it's point five here, ask for my opinion. That's like, you'll hear about that later in my PhD, like asking for what they actually think could be helpful is one of very important point in not just the young carers themselves, but also the family around them. Here I'd like to, to tell you more about the um, PhD um, project I've been conducting so far. It's about young carers support. My topics in uh, my professional career have been young carers for many, many years, but also family system nursing and quite um, lately digitalization and aging. So that's sort of a whole package to that. But um, my focus on the uh, my PhD was young carers in a system. So this is um, um, a sort of the theoretical framing from family system. Um, the project aims to understand outcomes and impacts of young people's caring role on their lives and what they think their needs are. And also for the um, development of a model of support for the Swiss context in order to um, get NGOs or institution um, get make them ready and prepared for these young people who come who need support over the life and who not need only support for themselves but also for the family in order to build up an individual network a very flexible network they need um, this phd used a multi-methods approach so um, we used three different studies one was a theoretical analysis and the two others the quantitative and qualitative study were two projects um, from the swiss Young Carers Research Team. 
We sort of tried to give you an impact in that, that the, um, an in, insight in the key findings. So actually in my PhD, um, the people we talked with showed the importance of family and social network when illness impairment or what, what cause um, it takes of life addiction, frailty, you know, that becomes an issue. So not only focus on care recipients or not only focus on young carers or young adult carers, well, or as we will hear, young ad adolescents carers, but focus on the system. And this is important for professionals who sort of only look in their occupational sector, but they have to apprehend that the fami familial experiences in the context of their living environment, their family, their system, and they have to be treated as individuals. Um, one of the key findings was also that it does not um, necessarily um, have to be that the care recipient and young carers have the same um, perspective on their situation. So these do not have to represent two mutually exclusive positions when it comes to health and well-being, especially when looking at, at the level of burden of care. What we think professionals um, could be good at and should learn about supporting young carers and their families is that prior to everything, you have to build up a trustful relationship regardless what kind of occupational um, sector you come from. And you sort of have to be a part of an individual network for each family and for the young carers themselves and not build up one for them. So you have to be an active part in it. And here it's also very important that because it is um, young, young carers, they're sort of traveling through education, to, through leisure times and hobbies and um, through finding a, a, a professional career or go to higher education that you you team up with professionals from other sectors in order to really um, um, identify them and be able to support them over a long period. Coming from a psychological perspective, my focus on young carers is on the mental health aspects. My PhD project is about whether and how adolescents can grow personally and flourish when they grow up in a caring context. The overall aims were to gather knowledge about positive and negative outcomes experienced by adolescent young carers and to understand how caring can have different effects on adolescents' mental health. We collected cross-sectional data from 2,525 adolescents which we accessed through different educational institutions. We used an online survey to ask youth about their caring experiences, about their experiences of stress, perceived benefits related to adversity and well-being. Some of the key findings were that young carers experience a complex interplay of positive and negative feelings and perhaps contradictory motivations. Perceiving benefits seems favorable for the well-being and coping with stress, but not in all cases. The benefit of feeling more empathetic seemed to lead to more stress and could thereby decrease young carers' well-being. Professionals can respond by carefully paying attention to young carers' reactions by providing an open ear and by encouraging them to reflect on their roles, positive and negative sides, as well as to offer assistance and support in case they wish for it. All Young Carers Research Policy and Practice projects during the last couple of years helped Switzerland to reach a new level on the cross-national comparison. We are not yet where Australia is, but we are very glad that things move in a good direction for Young Carers and their families in Switzerland. To follow up on our progress in Switzerland, we invite you to attend our national conference in 2022 and to stay in contact. Thank you very much for your attention. 
We're looking forward for your questions, your insights and all the things you can tell us we do not know by now.